And as urologists, we do a, a really horrible job at assessing the role of anxiety and stress that people face. And we know there's recurrent data that shows that men who are on active surveillance uh, for their prostate cancers have a twofold increased incidence of anxiety and depression than the general population. And we also know that men once diagnosed with prostate cancer for the first 90 days have a higher incidence of suicide risk than any other solid malignancy in the human body. And I don't think these are addressed. I don't think these are even mentioned. And that's why your role is so valuable. Your, your presence is so valuable uh, in this process. And I think that it's not, shouldn't be ever undervalued. And that's why we've had this conversation on numerous occasions, why we speak through our voice of as the foundation uh, that we want to get people involved in holistic care uh, as an adjunct and become an integral part of their care uh, so that it becomes more mainstream for their care and their survivorship. And I, I love that you're saying that because, and it gives me, it just makes me so angry uh, to hear those statistics around suicide because you know, there's, then there's all the comorbidities associated with, you know, um, depression. So you mentioned that just the diagnosis causes depression. Well, antidepressants, which are usually what's prescribed, then feed back and worsen the risk of erectile dysfunction, for example. Mm -hmm. Erectile dysfunction becomes a significant factor in depression itself. Mismanagement of erectile dysfunction is a factor in depression hormone therapy itself can be a contributor to depression. Diabetes can be a contributor. So we're, and I think guys are really underserved in this space. Mm -hmm. And breast cancer has a huge advocacy behind it and a huge amount of drive behind it for solutions in a space where men are largely ignored. Um, and, and, and I almost don't think that we understand as clinicians, how much erectile function is a, integral piece of a man's identity. So when they all of a sudden, boom, hit that cliff and drop off, it's like, who am I? You know, how do I identify myself? What does it mean to be a man? And how can I bring um, strength and connection to my marriage? And that's actually a big piece we work on. Um, not just uh, erectile dysfunction, but reframing sexual health and sexual relationship in a marriage or a partnership, um, which is a big piece of preventing um, and mitigating depression. I, you know, I, it, it is, a, is amazing that, you know, this is just not addressed in general. And uh, what do you have as, do you have any simple first steps that you do when you're assessing anxiety and depression in patients when they uh, land on your doorstep? Dr. Ben says, okay, if I, I know you're hearing my sure. voice a lot, guys, but just if I, if I just jump in. So we use a simple screen called a GAD7, which I'm sure you know well, um, we're in a PHQ-9. So we ask questions like, would you like me to just screen you, Dr. Dr. Letts? No, go ahead. Can I screen you? So I would sure. ask you. If you like. So I would ask you. Um, so uh, Dr. Letts, can you tell me, um, are you struggling with, I want you to answer every day, most days, some days, never. And okay. I'm going to repeat that. Are you struggling with um, sleeping too much or sleeping too little? Every day, most days, some days, never. Um, some days. Feeling like you're eating too much or eating too little? Every day, most days, some days, never. Never. Feeling like you've let yourself or your family down? Every day, most days, some days, never. Some days. Mm -hmm. Who have you let down, yourself or your family? I would say both. Mm -hmm. And how do you think you might be letting yourself down, Mike? Um, I don't know if I'm not you know, working at my full capacity, if I'm either tired or I'm drained or I'm, I'm not being perfectly, you know, content when I'm taking care of patients and I'm like off. Like feeling like you're not present. Right. Yeah. Fully present. So you put a lot of pressure on yourself to be present. Well, and every time. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Feeling like you are down, depressed or hopeless every day, most days, some days, never. Never. Feeling like um, you're having trouble focusing, like reading a newspaper, watching television every day, most days, some days, never. 
some days. Mm-hmm. Um, feeling like you may harm yourself or others. Everybody. Never. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate how honest and upfront you were. You're not scoring for depression. Um, you To score, you need a five out of 21, you're a three. Um, but I think it's worth thinking about how you bring, how you put so much pressure on yourself to be fully present, because that would be hard for all of us, especially in the field that you're in. So I'm going to pause there. Dr. Lutz is not my patient, but um, I think it's a good way to demonstrate. And actually, I want you guys who are listening to think about your answers to those questions and whether or not you would fall on a screen. It's not about whether you're answering every day, most days, some days, or never. It's how many times you answer some days. Um, And at a five or above, that qualifies for a clinical depression. Is that helpful, Mike? I think it is. And I'm hoping that people who see this will understand that, you know, it's that's really what it's all about, is trying to be uh, assessing yourself you know, seeing where you're at. Yeah. And be somewhat introspective. And so because we have an hour and a half in that first visit, you know, we're really digging deep. And you saw just in that two minutes that you and I talked, the level of presence that I'm bringing to that screen is a little different than if a primary care is asking it. And unfortunately, when primary care, when when our family practice doc or a urologist hears that we might be struggling with depression, they're often prescribing an antidepressant, um, which can worsen erectile function. So I think um, working on erectile function, um, reframing erectile function, understanding how this man identifies himself, working on relationship stressors outside of prostate issues, all of those pieces are critical to helping this man move into his identity outside of erectile function. But we also, of course, rely on PD-5 inhibitors, on vibration therapy, on um, even uh, other kinds of physical and manual therapies, like, uh, this may sound horrible, but low dose electric shock therapy is very helpful. We Mm -hmm. look at massage, pelvic floor therapy. There's so many ways to look at bringing blood flow to the nerves that innervate or make the penis and that whole system work well. But I have talked for a really long time. So I feel like the next question should go to Dr. Mensah. 